Hello, this is Tech Ed Sharp. Today's tool that we're going to look at is the table saw. And this is a table saw that we've had for about 21 years. It has a guard. The parts of this are the fence. This is the fence and the fence clamps down. Our clamp doesn't work very well, so just to extra secure it, I use a seat clamp to hold it down. We have the blade here, and this is a, on this saw, we're using a planer blade. It's got carbide tips on it. They're fairly expensive. It's around $100 for the blade. There's a handle on the side where we can raise or lower the blade to adjust it. When using one of these saws, any time that you are dealing with a blade on a power saw, shut the circuit breaker off or unplug it before you make any adjustments. Trying to change a blade with the power on is leaves the potential for an accident. Um, maybe you have good faith in switches, but my faith in them isn't that good since I have seen switches fail. And luck. Now another safety tip that I suggest is I take a little WD-40 and I spray down my surface here and then I just take a rag and I rub the WD-40 into it, get it into my channels here and rub it over the surface. The WD-40 really won't hurt your wood. You're wiping it down and this makes the surface very smooth. Uh, when you're cutting wood, you really like to have everything slide smoothly. If this sticks or binds, that's where accidents happen. A couple of safety issues. On a table saw, only two surfaces should contact your material. You may have it contact the fence and the table. That is two surfaces, one, two. Or, in some instances, you'll be using a miter gauge, and a miter gauge is a tool that fits in this channel. I can adjust this to different angles if I want to make an angle cut, but this provides two surfaces. Surface here and the table. Never, ever use three surfaces. The minute you press a miter saw, a fence, and a table together, you are asking for it to be for the, to bind up. All it has to do is twist a little bit. This blade has a lot of power and it's going to kick the wood back. Probably the number one way that people are injured on a table saw is not by being cut by the blade, but rather being hit by the wood that they're cutting. If this blade catches, it will kick back and hit you. And if you saw the movie, I Walked the Line by Johnny Cash, where the brother was killed while cutting on a table saw. It was not a, probably a case of him getting cut by the blade, it was rather a piece of wood kicked back and stuck all the way through. And you certainly don't want that. That's why by observing your simple safety precautions of two surfaces, having your material clean, and using a sharp blade, there's nothing that's more dangerous than a dull blade. So always make sure your blade is are kept pretty sharp. I know they're expensive to replace, but you know safety is more important than money. So keep that in mind. Now when I set the blade to a cut, I like to set it about a quarter to a half an inch, about a quarter of an inch above the wood. It really doesn't need to be too much higher. Uh, the obvious safety factor, if you have a blade sticking up this high, it puts you in danger. Okay, first I would set my measurements. If I'm gonna rip a piece of wood, by the way, if you're ripping on a table saw, you're gonna be using a fence. If you're cross cutting, use the miter gauge. Don't do this. Don't use this like this. It's too dangerous because it twists, it can kick, and things happen very quickly. That's why they say an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Or, I guess maybe in Europe, a, um, a milliliter of precaution is worth a liter of cure. All right. First, I'm going to have my distance set. Then. Make sure my fence is tight. Put my clamp, 
clamp the fence down, make sure it's secure. Okay? Recheck my measurement to make sure I'm fine. Then, safety glasses. Uh, I do have a dust collector built into this, Delta saw, but this is a Delta, Delta table saw, which is one of the more popular brands, although many other companies make them. Make sure everything's secure before you start. Then, start it up. I use a push block. I'm not real big on pushing my hand by next to the blade, and that's kind of why this red area on here that you see, it, that, that's kind of a danger zone that you do not want to have your hand in. Make sure everything's good. I'm going to turn on the saw. Cut the saw. Like that, you get a little strip, you get your board. I also recommend when you are done with your cut that the blade be lowered down to the surface. And this not only protects anybody who should accidentally be near it, but it also protects the blade because you do not want to be tearing up a hundred something dollar blade. And then when, when we store ours, guards put back on. You can actually, you can actually run this saw under the guard. I find it to be more dangerous simply because you can't see what you're doing. And that is the table saw. Remember, think before you cut. Put safety first. Always use the what if rule. What if this happens? So if you think first, you will always be safe. Thank you.